Let's look at a common cause of failure on the IFR checkride, and it's a mistake that's all too easy for any of us to make. We're about to do an ILS approach at Easton and are navigating direct to the initial approach fix RICME using our Garmin GPS with the approach activated on the unit. The great thing about using a GPS for a ground-based approach like an ILS is that not only can we navigate direct to a fix we wouldn't otherwise be able to find, but on WAS-equipped receivers like this one, it'll anticipate our turn to the next leg and count us down to making it. We start the turn, and what happens on most, but not all units, depending on how old they are, is that the CDI on the receiver will automatically switch from tracking the GPS to tracking the localizer, and we see the enunciation switch from GPS to VLOC and see the course deviation for both the localizer and the glide slope. But what if that doesn't happen? We could toggle between GPS and VLOC mode ourselves by pushing the CDI button. Let's put it back in GPS mode and just say we forgot to switch it over. Our lateral guidance is still working on the VOR receiver. It's tracking the indicator on the bottom of the GPS unit, which is currently centered. This isn't the localizer course, but it's a simulated approach course, just like you'd see on an RNAV approach. Our vertical guidance isn't on though. Unlike an LPV, which is a GPS approach that provides both lateral and vertical guidance, the ILS approach, as provided on the GPS unit, doesn't simulate the glide slope course. It's not supposed to, because you're not supposed to use the GPS on this. You need to use the localizer and glide slope with the ground-based nav aid signals as the primary source of navigation on an ILS approach, and simply monitor the GPS guidance for situational awareness. Okay, but what actually happens? We fly the approach and are doing a great job of keeping both the needles centered. In part, this is due to our skill holding the localizer course, but also in part, it's a trick because no matter how high or low we are, the glide slope needle is frozen in the center. The examiner says nothing to us, so we continue along thinking we're really locked into a perfect ILS approach. We get to minimums and the hood comes off and we see just how far off the glide slope we are. No problem, make a quick correction, pull up, add power, and bring it in for a landing. Too bad though, we failed the check ride for not using the proper guidance and deviating from the glide slope path. Always make sure as you're intercepting the approach guidance that you're in the proper mode. Add this as a call out in your approaches. Say something like joining a approach course in VLOC mode, or if you're flying the G1000, say you're on the green needles instead of the pink ones from the GPS. A little mistake can cost a lot here.